Hey guys, it's David from Juki Junkies, home of Gigi's Fabric Shop. In today's video, we're going to be comparing the Juki 1181 to the Juki 1541S, which these are both industrial machines, and this topic's been heavily requested because they're both very comparable machines, and they're perfect for bag makers. So I hope you guys watch this video all the way through because we're going to have tons of information in the video. So just so you guys know the layout of this video, we're going to go over nine differences between the two machines first, and then we're going to do some sewing out on each machine to show you the differences and the sewing capabilities. So make sure you watch this video all the way through because there's going to be tons of information throughout the whole video. Another thing to note is we are JukiJunkies.com, which means we do sell a lot of Juki machines, and we carry pretty much all the industrials. So if you're interested in any one of these industrials, feel free to check out on JukiJunkies.com. We ship these industrials out very quick and we also ship them pretty much fully assembled. All you have to do is drop the head in and the oil pan, the table's already assembled, it arrives on a pallet, and there's no kind of hidden fees. Everything's just right there when you're checking out. So definitely check it out. And if you have questions, always feel free to reach out to us on email or phone. It'll be linked in the description of this video. Number one, oiling. Both of these machines are industrials, as, you, as we already know and they both take oil, unlike your domestic machines. So the Juki 1541S is a hybrid lubrication system. What does that mean? Well, it kind of oils itself and you have, you have to oil it on your own. So pretty much you're gonna tilt the machine up and there's an area where you're gonna be filling up the oil and it's gotta be between the low and the high. And then that'll just self lubricate the hook and all the other areas in the machine. And then there's some oiling spots on top of the machine that we have to also make sure we touch. There's a little clean area right here. That's where you're going to be filling up the oil and making sure that's well lubricated. And if you want a full video on oiling this machine, it'll be linked in the description or just check out our Juki Junkies YouTube channel and find the 1541S oiling video. So in comparison to the Juki 1181's oiling system, it's pretty much an oil pump that just oils the whole entire machine on its own. You don't really have to worry about doing any extra oiling like the 1541S. So let's kind of go over how that looks. So you're gonna tilt the machine up, and once you tilt that machine up, you're gonna see that there's an oil pan that kind of just kind of carries all the oil. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's in between the low and the high, just like the other machine, and you'll see that little pump right there. That pump is gonna slurp up all that oil and run it throughout the machine. So now let's tilt it back forward, and this little window up here, you'll actually see oil moving around in that window when you're running the machine really fast. We always recommend if you're running your machine super, super slow all the time, that eventually or occasionally you lift up your presser foot so that the feed dogs aren't rubbing on the foot with no material and run it super fast. And you'll see the oil splash around in that window showing you that it's running through the whole system and keeping it well lubricated. The next comparison, what kind of motor they, do they both take? Well, they both take servo motors. So they're both gonna be very quiet, reliable motors that do like spin a belt pretty much. And the 1181 takes an M39 belt and the M, uh, 1541S will take an M41 belt. That, mu that might not matter too much to you, but just know that it is a servo motor, not a direct drive motor. Both machines have the same function as far as motors go. Another cool feature about the servo motors is there is a plug on the back where the light can actually plug into it. So you don't have to plug in your light to another outlet, just plug it in the back of the motor. And I like to always plug it in and on so you know when the machine's on, the light's on. One other thing to note, to adjust your speed on these industrial machines, they both have the servo motor where you just adjust a little dial on there that turns up the RPMs on the motor itself, causing the machine to sew faster. So on this motor, on the 1541S, it's 350 to 3450 RPMs. So now that we've gone over the motors, what else can we go over? Hmm, let's see. They both have knee lifts. So there's integrated knee lifts that are gonna lift up your foot instead of having to use the lever on the back of the machine because they're not as easy to lift up as a domestic machine. They both have the same pretty much table with the K-legs or caster options, whatever you prefer. And I know I'm kinda gonna go over more than nine differences, but I realize that there's a lot of little things we should probably mention. So they both have LED lights. They both have the same exact thread stands. They have a little bit different bobbin winding methods. We'll show you what the 1541S has. It kind of just comes down from this second spool. You can actually be winding a bobbin while you're sewing, of course, on all industrials. Both of them will be the same with that concept. Um, you're just gonna go into this little tension disc and the bobbin goes right here. Very easy, very simple. And the 1181 is a little bit different. The 
it'll come from the thread stand down to the tension disc, down to the little bobbin winder right here on the side of the machine, and it's really easy to engage and disengage, and you can, of course, wind a bobbin while you're sewing as well. So both machines have the same stitch lengths. We have zero to nine millimeter on both the 1541S and the 1181. And as far as the foot lifting up, the 1541S will lift up 16 millimeters with the knee lifter and the 1181 will lift up 15 millimeters. So just one millimeter, a little bit shy of the Juki 1541S. What is the big, big, big difference that everybody's been wondering between the two machines? It's the walking foot systems between the two. So the Juki 1541S is a needle feed walking foot, which means they call it kind of like a triple feed walking foot system. And pretty much what that, what that means is the needle and the top walking foot is moving at the same time. The needle is actually picking up and going forward and backwards, pulling that material through. So if you know if your needle went through the material, it's gonna be moving the material because it has to, or it's gonna break pretty much. So you have that walking foot and the needle, which means that the 1541S is really good with those super heavy weight materials. And it can go up to pretty much like non-pliable leathers, things that you would be using for like a gun holster or kind of like maybe some really heavier duty belts. Now, obviously, if you're really doing that all the time, you'll probably want to go up to like a 1508H, something a little bit more heavier duty or possibly a cylinder arm in the future. But for all your pliable leathers and to some non-pliable leathers, the 1541S has that capability with the triple feed walking foot system to do it. So now we're back to the 1181. What's the difference between this one? Well, this one is still very awesome. It still has a walking foot system. Yeah. It just doesn't have that triple feed walking foot wow. system with the needle moving. So what does that mean? Well, pretty much, for example, it's just the feed dogs on the bottom and the walking foot on top always going, always moving together. Yeah. So it's moving the materials very, very consistently. It just doesn't have that third system where the needle is going down too. With that being said, the 1181 is very capable of doing heavier weight materials. It's just not gonna be as capable as the Juki 1541S because it doesn't have that third step to really ensure that you're going to be able to move those heavier weight materials. So what kind of needle system do both machines take? Well, the Juki 1541S, the machine behind us, the big one, is gonna be taking a 135 by 17 needle system. And it comes from the factory size are timed for about an 18 to a 22 size needle. And then if you change the timing, you could technically go to a 14 to a 16 or a 23 to a 24 size needle. But from the factory, no timing changes, 18 to 22. The Ajuki 1181 is going to be a DPX 17 needle. And from the factory, it's 18 to 22 size needle as well. And you can go change the timing so it can use a, 20, a 12 to a 14 or 23 to a 24 size needle as well. So starting with the 1181, as far as the threads go, you're gonna be working with a Tex 45 to a Tex 135. And of course, you could probably go a little bit bigger on the top if you really needed to for a certain project, but just know that's pretty much where the limits are on this machine. The Juki 1541S, the big boy, is gonna be using a Tex 45 all the way up to a Tex 138, and you can use that top and bottom on that machine. And of course, like I said on this one, you could probably go a little bit bigger on the top if you needed to for a certain project, but it's not you know, strongly recommended to go all the time. So that's the threads on both machines. The Juki 1181 doesn't have a safety clutch like the 1541S does, but if you get the S version on the 1541S, if you were to sew over something or hit something that you're not supposed to sew over, it'll actually trip a safety clutch so you don't knock the machine out of timing, and then you can just put it back into timing, or you can just release the safety clutch and re-engage it. So it's kind of a nice feature on the 1541S that you don't have with the 1181. So now that we've gone over all of the differences without sewing, Let's start throwing some materials underneath these machines, starting from light to heavy. We have four layers of cotton under the Juki 1181, coming down to two layers towards the end, and as you can tell, there's quite a bit of bunching. Now, that's to be expected, because with a walking foot machine, two to four layers of cotton is just too light. You're not going to be able to sew that on the Juki 1181. Remember, these machines are industrial machines and not cut out to do everything. So, I would recommend at least a minimum of six to eight layers of cotton on this machine before it's sewing nice and pretty. So we have six layers here and let's see how that looks. So as you can see, six layers of cotton looks much better. Uh, of course, there's not as much bunching, if any, 
And I would start to say that six layers is about the minimum I'd throw underneath the 1181 for sewing purposes. And as you can see though, the stitch quality isn't the best, and that's just because I'm not going to change the tension on every single material we sew over. This is more so just a demonstration of what the machine can handle with the foot and walking foot that it has. So here we go. We have, I believe this is eight layers of cotton. No bunching of the material. And we're sewing over that with ease. And we fold it over one more time. We're at 16 layers of cotton here. And let's see how it handles 16. So 16 layers of cotton, sews right over it like nothing. And here we are at 32 layers of cotton. This might be a little much for this machine, but it can still handle this. So let's just show you for some demonstration purposes. I'm going to start with the needle down. It's always nice to start with the needle down when you're going through thick layers because that first puncture is always the most brutal on the machine. So here we are sewing through 32 layers of cotton. And of course, you can see that machine just feeds it right on through. We got a little bit of bunching, too much press for pressure. We'll loosen that up a little bit and I'm sure it'd feed through nice and even. So as you can see, stitch quality is looking pretty good. Okay, let's try some denim. We have four layers of denim here, and of course, you can see the machines just powering right through that like nothing. So is that thickness perfectly. And here we are at eight layers of denim, and of course, it's sewing right through that perfectly as well. So if you want to make some denim bags, well, this machine can help you. So there we go. Now let's go over to some canvas material. So here we are with seven layers of canvas, and this is a pretty dense canvas. And of course, it's sewing right through that like butter, folding it over to 14 layers of canvas. And now this is getting kind of non-pliable. Um, it's pretty dense. And we're going to just go ahead and see what it can do with this. So we're going to start with that needle down, as the first puncture is always the most brutal on the machine. And let's go ahead and see what it can do. Wow. So it's going right through that, still very smooth. And the stitch quality still looks very good. So let's get a close-up of this stitch so we can show you what it looks like. And it's that blue one right there, so you can see the stitch quality is still looking really good even on 14 layers of canvas material. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so now we have two layers of genuine pliable leather, and it's sewing right through it like butter once again. These machines are just so smooth. I love the sound of them too. And the stitch quality looks fantastic. Of course, you know, contrast of coloring is not the best. I had black on the bottom, so, and blue on the top. And here we are with four layers of pliable, and it's still sewn through that like nothing. And there we go. Very nice stitches, very perfect stitches at four layers of pliable leather. And we're moving on to the 1541S now. This is eight layers of cotton, guys, and it's really wanting to suck it into the feed dog so it's a little little too light for this machine we really recommend a lot more layers so here's 16 layers and of course now we're starting to see the machine like the material a little bit more but it's still kind of uh, light i guess you'd say and then here we go is 32 layers of cotton and this is more so where the machine's happy with that triple feed walking foot system that needle is unbelievable at moving that material super consistently and you can see those stitch quality just looks amazing so here we are with no issue whatsoever. eight layers of denim and that was like butter and we're moving on to pliable leather and i want to say this is four layers of pliable leather here and it's sewing through that like nothing again beautiful stitch quality again it's tech 70 thread still and here's eight layers of pliable leather and again it's tech 70 so just stitches may look a little um, they don't pop as, as much as they could if we had heavier weight thread and then here is some heavier leather it's less pliable two layers we'll start off with two so it's right through that of course like nothing and this is really where this machine's shining this kind of thickness uh, this machine's really happy uh, and here is four layers of that leather again again sewing through it like nothing it's an amazing machine amazing stitch quality it's gonna be the red stitches on this machine and now we're moving on to a heavier leather so this is uh, about a quarter inch thick folded over twice much less pliable much denser and let's see how it sews well like nothing 
like button. And of course, sews through that like nothing again. And we're going to go ahead and show you the stitch quality. And you can see how beautiful the stitches are even on this. Well, actually, that doesn't look the best. That stitch quality looks better there. Um, might need to adjust my tension a little bit or change the needle and weight of thread. And here is a fillet knife sheath a customer brought in. The white stitches are Tex 138 thread, and you can see how much better those pop with that thicker thread, and the red is the Tex 70 I'm using now. So there you have yes. it. So if you guys have any questions on what machine's right for you, feel free to reach out to sewingmachines411 at gmail.com or give us a call at 813-661-9000, and we can go over what machine will fit your purpose the best. Uh, both machines, like I said, can sew over some pretty good layers of material, much more than your domestic machine will do. But keep in mind, it's not going to sew over those lighter weight materials. Both machines aren't. So if you're really in the middle of sewing light to heavy, you're still going to want to have something to sew those lighter materials, such as like a TL-18 or a TL-2010, or maybe if you're in the industrial world at 8700, um, because these machines are going to be really picking up the slack on the heavier weight stuff. So we like to say it's like the 1181 is right here as far as thicknesses of materials, and then the 1541S is right here. And then once you get there, you're going up to the heavier machines. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're sewing heavyweight materials all the time, go for the 1541S. If you're not, 1181 is gonna be great for touching the, the, the level of thicker materials that your domestic machine can't touch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know there's tons of information in this video, and I know some of it might be a little conflicting and confusing. confusing. So if you guys have any questions, like I said, email, call us. Make sure you guys comment down your uh, experience with the two machines. Maybe you already have these machines and you can kind of pitch in some ideas that we may have not mentioned. You can also check out Juki Junkie's Facebook group and post on there. And that's a big Facebook forum with tons of members where we talk about these machines on a regular basis. And uh, I hope you guys leave a like on this video. Subscribe because we post every Sunday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And check out JukiJunkies.com for all your sewing needs.